Hello there, everyone, and a very, very happy Thursday to you today. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day today. Very excited to be with you uh, this afternoon or this evening, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, my name is Sarah, and you're joining us for Sarah's Stamping Hour. So today we're going to be doing some stamping, but we're also going to be doing a lot of coloring. So I'm very excited to show you what we're going to be coloring with today because it's something that I've been having a great time with. So welcome to everybody who is joining us. Hi, Avril and Sue. It's great to see you. Stacy and Ziamara. It looks like Melly. Teresa. Hi, Teresa. I feel like I just saw you what, a couple of days ago. And Lori, Nancy, it is fantastic to see so many good friends coming through. I see all of your names on here. Danielle is in the Caribbean. So ooh. Danielle, hopefully you're having better weather than we are having uh, in Hamburg, Germany, which is really strong winds, lots of rain, very stormy outside. So I will be dreaming of the Caribbean myself. Hi there, Cece and Carrie. Uh, Joan is joining us. So it's great to see everybody. Hello and welcome. Just welcome, welcome. I'm great. I'm really grateful that you're here and joining us today. So um, we are going to be going for about an hour. And I've got some really fun new things, new to me things. So I'm going to show you what what I'm talking about here. Oh, before I do, I should remind everybody, I, I know that Roxanne, who is um, behind the Alta New Badge, has probably also posted this, but if you share today's live while we are live, you can be in for a $15 uh, gift certificate to the Alta New store. So keep that in mind as well. All right, on to my newest obsession, woodless watercolor pencils. So if you have these from Alta New, let me know. Tell me what you think. I just got these in, oh, I want to say a couple of weeks ago. And um, as I was talking with Lydia, we kind of plan like what we'll be showing in the in the lives and the classes. And so, and I said, you know, I haven't worked with the woodless watercolor pencils from Alta New before. And I'd like to have a go with those because so many of us, Teresa, I'm, I'm looking at you with this one. We love to color flowers. We love to work with flowers on our cards, scrapbook pages, tags, and other paper crafts. And so I'm always kind of looking around for different mediums. You know, we can color with our artist markers and of course with the ink pads and so on. But a good watercolor pencil, a good colored pencil is a treasure, but a good watercolor pencil is going to be a lot of fun. So I got these in the mail and was super excited and just had a great time playing with them. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of what I did and then we can kind of um, play it together. And I will also show you some of the stamps that I've been working with. So when it comes, of course, to coloring mediums, um, well, what are you going to color with them? Well, you can, you can do lots of different backgrounds um, and I'm not gonna focus on that too much today. Instead, I really want to talk about coloring in flowers. This is a great place to start. So I'm going to be working with the um, Pretty Pansies. So this is one set. It's a layering stamp set, as you can see, which is great. But also, you know, you've got these really great outlines. So is that the other one? Yeah, here. And then the leaves as well. So you can do the layering. And I do have a card that I've done that has the layering with the inks on it. But um, you can also use those outlines to do other mediums with. And then the other stamp set I'm working with is the Bearded Iris, which I taught a class on not too long ago for all to new. And these are gorgeous. So again, it is a layering stamp set. You have two big irises. One is layerable, and the other one is just the outline, which means that you've got two full outline stamps that you can play with on that set. And then of course, if we're thinking about, well, what else do I have in my Alta New stash? Lots of flowers that I can color with. So I'm really excited, can you tell? <laughs> There's just something about these watercolor pencils that I just had a great time with. So I figure what we can do is take a look. 
you know, just some really simple coloring techniques. I'll talk a little bit about the watercolor pencils and then we'll get right into it. So as you can see, you can do something really simple. This is just that um, pansy stamped in black and colored. You can also do things, of course, incorporating some of the embossing powders. So you can see there, it's got a little bit of shine. It's been stamped and embossed with gold embossing. And then I was inspired by Aram Tasneem um, to do something with white embossing powder and colored pencils. So I was having a really good time. So I would love to show you what I've been playing with. So if that sounds good, I am going to turn down my camera, turn around my camera. Let me just take a few more looks at some of the comments. Okay, looks like, oh, looks like you guys do like those floral stamps too. Some of you have them. That's great. Okay, and a hello to everybody who I have not said hello to yet. And a big thank you also for um, Roxanne, who is the magic behind the Alta New badge today. So thank you, Roxanne. Okay, so here's a here's a look at my typically my messy desk. <laughs> so let me just kind of shuffle some things out of the way. Having some tea tonight. We'll move that out of the way too. And um, let me show you a couple of things about this. So get this out of the way. With the watercolor pencils. This is what Altenew has on their website. So on the product page, like if you're ordering these online, you'll see that you can also download a color swatch sheet, which is really handy. There are 24 pencils in this pencil set, which is a great value. It's a, it's a lot of really nice colors. And of course, we love our Altenew color palette. And here's where you can see, this is the one that I just printed off, off of the website. You've got everything from jet black. You've got some really nice browns, nice warm tones in here. It goes into the yellows, oranges. You've got orange cream, which is a really nice kind of between color. It goes between um, an orange into some of those beautiful um, reddish pinks. So it blends. It's a really nice crossover color. Then you've, of course, got red, ruby red, rubellite. You've got lavender, beautiful blue ensemble here. And then, of course, going into the greens, because if you like to color flowers, you need the floral colors, but of course you also need the leaf colors here too. I just think this is a fantastic, really um, cohesive set of colors because you've got everything from light to dark and in between warm and cool colors. So this you can just print right, right off their website. Now what I like to do with things like this, whether it's the um, water brush markers or the water colors, I like to do my own swatch. You can also print off a blank one. So without the colors on here, I've added the colors which is why it's a little bit rumply looking because I just printed this onto printer paper. And of course that's not as sturdy as watercolor paper, but I just wanted to do like a quick scribble in, add a little bit of water and just see how they act on regular kind of cheap um, copy or printer paper. The thing that I love about these is that they blend so smoothly. I mean, they're really smooth to work with, which is a joy. And so I just had to go and kind of scribbled in, kind of got a feel for some of these colors. Some of the colors were new to me. The Oolong Tea was new to me. Um, the Sicilian Amber, like I don't have that in an ink pad color. So those were, were new shades. Um, of course, I'm well acquainted with all of the turquoise, the Dewdrop, Mountain Mist. Those are some of my favorites. So didn't really have to think too hard about those. But this is a really great kind of reference point to have on hand if you're deciding which colors to go with when you're coloring is sometimes, well, they're pretty true on the outside, but sometimes you may want to see what it looks like actually on here. Of course, they have printed the names on here. So a little bit hard to see, maybe it's small, but um, yeah, do drops you can see on there. Okay, so these are our watercolor pencils. The greens do look really good, Cece. You're right. 
that it, you've got everything from this lime, limeade into moss. So from light to dark, bright and warm in there too. So this is just kind of, you know, when I get a new coloring medium, I like to kind of play with that to see that I am, um, you know, getting, getting used to those colors. So you've got 24 in here. Um, the difference between a watercolor, woodless watercolor pencil and a regular color pencil, um, my husband asked this because I was going on about how much I love these and he said, what makes it woodless? So it simply means that like, for example, here's a regular pencil, graphite pencil, and you've got the wood base on here, right? And then you've got your, your actual pencil part in the center. This doesn't have that wood. So this is all pigment. It does have kind of like a casing on it almost. And that um, is going to be protecting the pigment, protecting your, it from going all over your hands too. But it also means that you don't have um, this wood around here. It's a pure stick of pigment, which allows you to put down a lot of color um, quite easily and quickly. So let's take a look at this, move my other pencil out of the way. We can take a look at some of these colors. Now, one thing you do want to make sure of, and I've heard this from a couple of people with basically any kind of woodless pencil, is that if you drop them, they can break uh, because they don't have that wood in there. So you do want to just be sure when you're when you're handling them that you're not uh, that you're taking care. Okay, I'm going to move the T out of the way, and let's just take a look at how you can use these. So I'm going to work with. Let's see. This is turquoise. What a surprise. This is turquoise. So what you can do, of course, simply come in and put some color down. Now I'm kind of going at an angle when I'm using this. You can certainly use just the tip of it, but if you want to put down some nice color on here, and I'm, I'm working on some watercolor paper, watercolor cardstock. So it's got some texture to it. So you can see I've got some really nice, rich color. Then what I can do is just come in with one of the um, watercolor brushes. And this is wet. I haven't filled the barrel. It's just been in a cup of water. And then just work that color around. Now here's where you can really start to feel. And if you were with me in my house, and doing this with me, you would be able to feel how smoothly this reacts with that water. It blends so beautifully. It's just, it's like a dream. It really is. Lana, I see your question. Are these woodless? Yes, these are woodless watercolor pencils. So of course you can bring this in. You can add more water. You can work with less water. You can kind of play with the intensity if you want to, but that's just as easy as it gets. This is how I was coloring in a lot of those different uh, flowers. So you can go from quite intense to quite light, quite pale. Okay, the other thing you can do, let's see, let's look at, this one is crimson. You can also take your water, brush or paintbrush. Let me get one of my trusty rags here. <laughs> it does look terrible, but trust me, it's clean-ish, but it's used a lot. And get the tip of my brush just a little bit wet and then just simply pick up the color straight from the tip. So this is another way that you can use these. And again, add more water, add less or go with less water and carry that out if you want to. So again, I'm working on cardstock, uh, watercolor cardstock, which is what I would really recommend. And uh, Alta New has some watercolor cardstock. So you can see, just look at how beautifully that blends. You don't have any lines, you don't have any streaky bits. And I am working on to a textured watercolor cardstock. So there is a visible texture on here. I can see it from where I am. So these are two ways that you can use this. Now you can also, let's see here. 
Do, do, do. Uh, I'm going to take uh, Coral Bliss, one of my favorites. And let's see, how about Heartbeat? And I'll just pop down a little bit of the Coral Bliss. And then I'll go to Heartbeat, scribble a little on here. And then let's see, I'll grab, I think that's Crimson. And once again, my grubby little towel here, just clean off this brush. And again, you can use a paintbrush, but I like using the uh, water brushes. I'm gonna start on the lighter color here and just work to blend these colors together. So you can end up with multiple colors as you're blending, two, three, however many. And this is the nice thing about the color palette that's included because it means that you've got that range of colors. So where's my chart? So that if you wanted to go from the lavender fields into ultramarine, desert night, and turquoise, you've got a nice range in here that you know will go together and will work together. So this is the nice thing about getting a set of whatever kind of medium coloring, medium pencils, pens, and so on, is that you kind of have that guesswork taken out of it for you. I remember in the early days when alcohol markers came out on in stores and they were really expensive. There was only one brand. Everybody was buying it. And I went to the art supply store and they were super expensive. You could only buy them by the onesies. And I was so stymied as to what colors to buy. I bought the colors that I like, which were red and turquoise. And then I went home and I was like, now I can only color things that are either red or turquoise. Um, you know, it's, lim it's limiting, I guess, is what I would say. So then you can blend in those colors. Do as much or as little as you want to. Barbara's asking about the watercolor paint set. Are these colors different? Well, probably you're going to have some overlapping. I was just mentioning... Um, uh, Barbara, I'm not sure. Do you have the the um, watercolor paint set is probably what you're referring to. So with these ones, you've got, like, I don't have oolong tea. Uh, there are a couple of overlaps that I can think of um, in, in, like, some of the reds and probably some towards the blues. And maybe Roxanne has a clearer answer for us. But while you will have similar colors, they are also a different medium. So it's a slightly different approach, I would say to using them, but I don't think you're going to have too many duplicates in the sense that um, like, oh, I've already got a turquoise in this and a turquoise in that. But maybe Roxanne, maybe you have, um, you have a more definite answer that you can give me because I don't have my watercolor set right in front of me, unfortunately. Okay, so this is just a, a quick way that you can use these. Um, of course, you can also do some background techniques too. You can color the entire piece. You can do some shading and blending. I'm just going to stick with um, stamping and coloring in if that is okay with you guys. So I'm going to sh carefully shuffle these pencils over to the side in my water cup and clean up with my grubby little cloth. But I, hopefully this gives you a good idea of how you can use these. So the next thing let's do, let's get into some stamping. So I'm gonna set this over to one side and let's start with our handies. Okay, well, I told you to be careful with the pencils and now I'm rolling them all over the place. So um, with the pansies, and I'll flip it over, you can see they're quite a um, stylized design, I guess is what I, what I would call them. Um, quite fresh, quite modern. I wanted to show you some examples with this as well as this beautiful bearded iris set because this one is more detailed. Um, this is maybe more lifelike, I guess. So um, I wanted you to be able to see how you can do this with a couple of different styles of stamps. So let's start with our pansy. And I'm going to be stamping this with the obsidian black. 
I think by now everyone on planet Earth knows that that is my favorite black ink pad in the world. But the other important thing is because um, this is a pigment ink and because this is um, perfect, as you can see on here, for watercolor and other water-based mediums. So anytime you're working with water and you don't want your black ink to react or smear, then go with this. This is my go-to. So here, rather than bothering with all of the layering, I'm just going to go for the outline. So I'm going to take this big pansy. That's going to be my outline stamp on here. Let's see. I'll get my example here. And again, working on to watercolor cardstock. And I'm just going to pop this down using my Misty. Ink this up. And pop this down. Lots of fun room on here to color. So you can see it's a, a really nice, open, simple design. Okay, so I'm going to grab a stem for this too. So I've got two stems. I've got um, the open stem, which is two lines, and then I've got the like filler in <laughs> stem that's just one line. So I'm going to take the one that's two lines. I think you can see the difference on there. So that's, we're, since we're not doing the layering, I'm going to use that and I'll just pop this down here. Now the fun thing, of course, with the stem being kind of wavy is you can have it, you know, you can have it going either direction if you wanted. It's up to you. So let's just put this here. See if I can get that aligned well enough. Okay. And also with the obsidian. And then pop that down. Okay. Clean that up before I end up with it somehow transferred to my face. It never fails. Get done with one of these stamping sessions, and I've inevitably got ink on my hands, on my face, places I didn't realize. So now I've got the stem and the flower. I also want to add in some leaves. And there are two leaf styles or two leaf sizes. You've got a large leaf here, and then you've also got the smaller one up at the top. So I'm going to take the smaller one and the larger one. I only need the outlines since I'm not working with um, any of the layering. And I'll just put this one here and then... I'll do this one here. And the stem or the leaves are nice because they have like a really narrow, fine um, connector piece on here. So you don't have to worry about trying to match things up. It's a really nice stamp set. It, um, it's one of those that's, that kind of works for any theme. Birthdays look great with pansies. Thinking of you. You can do sympathy, you can do birthday, kind of goes the, runs the range. So there we go. And you can see what I mean where the stems can just kind of hook right on. You don't have to worry about trying to really line things up too terribly carefully. Okay, so put these over to one side and then we can start to color. Okay. It's a sweet image, I think. It's a really sweet image. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna color the flower and then also, of course, the stem and the leaves. Now you can go with any of your colors. And these come in all different colors. Um, purple and blue, I think, are probably the, the ones that I'm thinking of the most. But I'm gonna go with, let's do the fresh lemon. This one has a very um, faint, <laughs> Um, name on it. So if I don't have my glasses on properly, I can't really see it. So I'm going to grab the fresh lemon and the, um, this is the, da, da, da. this is the lemonade. And I also want orange cream. That's the coral bliss, maple yellow, 
orange cream. Okay, so I'm going to go with these three for my flower top. Okay, and I'm going to start with my lightest color and then just kind of come in here and scribble that color on. And I think it's probably quite faint for you to see. I'm just going to add this color in here. I'm not worrying about being too precise around the outside edges because I know that I'm going to be coming in with additional color. So I'm going to leave that as it is and then add in a bit of this is the, I think this is the lemonade, my two yellows. I'm just going to come in and add a little bit more, kind of around the center area. So I've got some definition in here. And I am, again, working on to my uh, watercolor cardstock. Okay, so I've got those two colors in. Then let's bring in some water before we start working in with some of the um, orange cream just to smooth this out. And the nice thing is I don't have to worry too much about those black lines smearing. So this is where you do not want to use your dye-based inks to stamp your image. Stick with your permanent inks for stamping or do some heat embossing. So I'll show you that with another card as well. Okay, so here's where I can kind of Blend that color out. I love this cheerful combination of yellows. Really, really sweet. Okay. So this is wet right now. We can do a little technique that is called working wet into wet. So in this case, I'm just gonna come in with that orange cream Set this aside and then add a little bit of that orange cream here. Just scribbling out some of that color again from the center of the flower sort of outward. You can see where the, that water is kind of wicking that away. And then again, coming back with some more water. You can always add more, but taking it away is not uh, really as possible as one might like. So start with a gentle touch. And you can always put down more color. But you can see how nicely everything is blending it really is, I wish you guys could be here coloring with me because it really is sort of therapeutic. I'm very relaxed right now for someone who's doing a live video. Okay, so now I'm starting to get a little bit more shading and shadowing on here. The other thing that is helpful to keep in mind is that with one of these layering stamp sets. If you're not sure about where to put down different layers of color, like where to put down darker colors, follow the, um, the, um, the examples that you see here. So if you're thinking, well, I, what would I do with like around the edges and so on? You can simply follow this style on here for a little bit of inspiration. So I'm going to come around here and use this as my cheat sheet. So again, this is with that orange cream. And come around and add some more around the outside edges so that I've got some variation in there. And then again, back with a little bit of water and simply blending. It's always good to have a, a cloth or something on hand that you can kind of blot away any of your excess water as you're going. And this is one of those techniques you can really 
um, spend a lot of time noodling around with your colors. You can add more, you can add um, different shades, different highlights. You can also do things fairly quickly. So it's really up to you and the look that you're going for. I wanted to have a little bit of light, a little bit of dark in here. Let's blend this out a bit more. And again, I'm using the water brush. There's no water in the barrel. I find that um, if I'm just using like a, a cup of water here, that is going to do the trick as well. I'm gonna pick up a bit of this from here and add a little bit more definition. And this is just with three of the colors. So here's where you can start to see where that variety is really going to come in handy. Now, um, as for sharpening your woodless watercolor pencils, um, there are a couple of different things that you can do. Now, I've always been taught that you um, should sharpen them by kind of scribbling on the sides onto a piece of like scrap watercolor cardstock. And I haven't had to sharpen these yet, so I haven't tried that. Uh, Lydia told me that she uses a pencil sharpener with hers, so um, depends on what you prefer. I was asking her about that because I thought, oh, I want to be sure to be able to tell you that. Okay. So here we can see how this is starting to come out. Super duper easy. Uh, I'm going to leave the little center untouched for now because I want to come in and do some coloring on the on the leaves and the stem. So let's see. I've got limeade. That's a really good one. This one is dewdrop. That one I tend to grab a lot because I think it's so pretty. I think I'm just attracted to it. Uh, grass field. That's also a new color to me. Um, it's not one that I have an ink pad color of. And then Shadow Creek, that is also new to me. I think I need some new ink pads. Okay, so I'm gonna get, again, start with the lightest color. This is the Limeade. And just scribble in some color here in the stem. And then also in the leaves. Now I would say too, if you are somebody who enjoys doing colored pencil coloring, but you don't want to do the watercolor part of it, these certainly work beautifully as um, colored pencils too. Okay, so I've got that first color down. Then I'll come in with another one. This is the grass field. And I'll just add a little bit of color along the center of those leaves. And then this is Shadow Creek. And we'll do a little bit here. Okay. Once again, come back in. Now, I want to be careful with doing that skinny stem that I'm using a tip that is thin enough that I'm not going to blend that color right off of the stem itself. Okay, and then I'm just working these colors in. So this is kind of like what I was showing you at the beginning of taking a couple of colors, putting them down onto your paper, and then blending them all in one go. It is a little bit therapeutic, I have to say. I also teach a, um, an after-school art club at uh, a local elementary school, and I often have the kids doing coloring, you know, drawing and coloring projects. And it's amazing that you can get a group of fifth graders to be awfully quiet and focused when they're coloring something that they find interesting. It's not just for kids though, it, it, it goes for adults too. I think we can, we can easily get some therapeutic relaxing time in just by coloring. Okay. And so that is how you can quickly, fairly quickly and easily do some really simple watercolor colored penciling. Lisette, I see that you're asking about what kind of paper is being used. This is watercolor cardstock. So 
yeah this is what i recommend do another uh card using like a smooth fairly sturdy weight cardstock and i'll show you that in a second as well but for all of my samples today i've just been using watercolor cardstock because i do find that it is a bit sturdier okay so this is um what i was going off of from this card well then we can take another look at this as well again using those same colors I've got the just for you sentiment on here. So the pansies, they don't have any sentiments. They don't have any words on them. So I'm using sentiment strips too. This is a favorite stamp set of mine because they have nice, small, um, very simple font, really nice sentiments that you can easily stamp onto another cardstock piece and add onto the front of your card. So that's what I've done here. Done a little bit of spattering in the background and I've got some sequins and a little bit of um, gold embroidery thread on there. And it's up onto a, a craft-based cardstock. So that is our first card that I wanted to show you. And I just think it's such a fun way of doing um, some simple coloring. So I realized that we are really working through our time today. So I do want to move on to another card example to show you. Now this one, I think many of you are familiar with Erin Tasneem. She is one of the designers at Altenew and I, she has a really very distinct, beautiful watercolor technique and style. And I'm always inspired by her. So I thought, ooh, this would be a good opportunity to, um, to try my hand at creating an Erin style of, um, coloring project. So let's take a look at this. Now for this one, I've done some embossing and just in this spirit of realizing that we don't have a huge amount of time, I did do some pre-embossing for us. So I think many of you are familiar with the technique of embossing where you stamp using your embossing ink and some embossing powder. In this case, I use the pure white. So I stamped the large outline that we were working with earlier, as well as the small outline. So there's two pansies on this set, and then the two leaves. And I did a little bit of masking. If you have the matching die set to the pretty pansies, you don't have to do fussy cutting to create masks like I did. So. I love this set. I need the, the dies that go along with it. So I have stamped and white embossed um, on this piece of, again, working with um, card, uh, watercolor cardstock. So maybe if I'm tilting this, you can kind of see that. Otherwise, it'll be a little bit like magic when the colors start to emerge. But I like this process of using um, not black but something that will kind of go into the background so for this one i'm going to be using let's see let's get that coral bliss okay and heartbeat i had that a second ago and then mm -mm -mm, i will also get let's do crimson and ruby red so i've got all of my beautiful reds on here again i'm going to start with the lightest color i'm going to have to angle this a little bit just so that i can see with my white on white and i'm not going to um totally avoid the lines but i, I am being pretty careful that i'm not just kind of scribbling all the way across here this is gonna be like a magic show because I realize that you can't really see where I am coloring. You have to be up close with me. So I've got this first flower here and I'll do the same with the second flower. This is where you need some good lighting in your craft room. Good lighting and a good craft mat. <laughs> are always important. Okay, so I've got two of these flowers very lightly colored in, and that is with the lightest color, which is that Coral Bliss. So again, let's just, let's find these colors. Let's find the shape of this flower. I'm just going to be 
painting around here. In this case, I can go over the lines. I don't have to worry about that because, of course, my embossing is going to act as a resist. I'm just going to kind of angle that there. I think you can start to see where the colors are defining the, the shape a little bit more. Okay. And I'm using water, but not a ton of water. So I can move this around a little bit more. So there's our first flower. I think you can see it's still quite faint. I have new eyeglasses and new contact lenses. And um, it's nine, well, 10 o'clock. Here, so it's dark. So it's uh, if you guys can't see it, I totally understand because I am having a bit of a time as well. But trust me, it is here. Okay. So there, I think you can see very, very shadowy effect, very, very light. Okay, but that was our lightest color, so that's why. Now we'll come back in, and I'm going to use the heartbeat, and let's get a little bit more water on here. Kind of scribble that on and again adding in some colors. So I'm going to do the heartbeat here. Again, just scribble that on. Don't need to worry too much about definition or precision, but I do want to then come back and be careful when I'm adding my water so that I'm painting this. And again, going with those lines and filling out some of that beautiful color. This is where you can see the shape of the flower a little bit better. And again, this is where it's so nice to have a variety of your colors that you can play with. This would be equally beautiful working with some of the blues or the lavender, but you do need to have your glasses on. <laughs> okay, come around here like so. So there we can start to see it blooming a little bit. Okay. Come back again, add some more water down here on our smaller flower, and a little bit more of our pencil. Okay, here we go. And again, just kind of scribbling that water on there. I don't need to worry about going over those lines in between the petals because the embossing powder is that resist. Make sure I've got all of the petal shape. So there we can start to see that coming up. Okay. So let's get a little bit more. This is crimson. Now for this one, I'm going to concentrate some of this crimson more on this flower. And then the other one, let's do a little bit more of the ruby red. But I can keep using that same brush and this and same jar of water. I'm not really getting that jar of water too badly colored. Don't need to tune that out. So just bringing in a bit more. And again, we start to see where those colors are blending really beautifully. And that white embossing powder on there is creating such a nice um, shape and dimension, but without it being the same kind of uh, definition that you would have with a black stamped 
image or even with gold embossed and we'll look at that in a bit as well. Okay. So here we go. Again, just a little bit around the edges. I always like to start it kind of in the center of the flower, work my way out on those petals. The colors blend so and move so beautifully. And here I can come around on some of that detail. Okay, so there we can see. Yeah, <laughs> Connie says, just for the coral, I need these watercolor pencils. Well, trust me, it's not just for the coral, but I love the coral as well. So I, I totally understand where you're coming from. Sometimes it's just one color or one, you know, uh, stamp, one sentiment on a stamp set. Okay, so for the leaves, let's see, I'll grab, I've got grass field and limeade. Let's start with limeade. And again, I'm going to do this uh, loosey-goosey kind of coloring in so that I can get my shape a little more defined so we can see where we're coloring. I'm scribbling that in with the limeade. And clean that off a bit more. And then add in that color of water. So the watercolor pencils, I have to say, these, when I got these, I was, um, I had the weekend that I could work on projects. And it was one of those, one of those experiences, we crafters know this, where you realize like you're working away, you're having, you know, having a session in your crafting area, crafting room, if you've got one. And then you start thinking like, you know, I'm kind of hungry. And then you realize that like two hours has gone by <laughs> and, and you've just been in your own little zone. So this is what I love about the the medium of color or the technique of coloring. So there we go. We can start to see some of those leaves coming out. Let's do a little bit more, a little bit darker. I think we can all use a little bit of Zen time <laughs> from time to time. Okay. And as I mentioned, I did a little bit of masking with the leaves and the flowers. So I've got some that look like they're kind of coming from behind the other image. I can see I've got some more to color. Let me grab that beautiful coral. And a bit more here that I didn't see. We can fill that out a little bit as well. And let's see, I'm gonna attach this a little bit more. And there we go. So again, you can do as much or as little with something like this. You can have um, whatever colors that you're working with blending so easily. And that white on white, let me show you what the finished example looks like. Since this is still a little bit wet, I just let that air dry. Here you can see same color combinations. Again, did a little bit of spattering on the background and some of the sequins and another one of the sentiments from the sentiment strips. So and that is it with the white uh, white on white effect. Now I know we have not got a whole lot of time left. Should be Sarah's stamping two hour <laughs> session with something like this. But I did want to show you this one. Now this is with um, the bearded iris. And in this case, again, I've got them pre done because I thought we might find ourselves in this situation. And I stamped and embossed these with the rose gold. Now with the bearded iris, let me grab this. You've got the two outlines on here. Now this is a layering stamp set, 
you, but it's only layerable on one of the on one of the large irises. So one is a layerable stamp set, this one here, and one is just an outline so that you can create, I don't know if you can see this, one that is layered and one that is like maybe a background effect. These are beautiful. These are a lot of fun. But in this case, let's just take a look. I've done this with um, gold embossing powder. And let me see, I'm just going to grab the, da, da, da. let's do the Coral Bliss. Uh, let's add in a bit of Lavender Fields with this and the orange cream. Yes, orange cream, let's do this. I'll start with my lighter color. I feel like I'm like racing against the clock here, but I know that Combining this with some of the gold embossing is just really nice. So this is the this is the Coral Bliss <laughs> for all of us Coral Bliss fans out there. I'm just going to scribble this in here, kind of going around the edges. And let's see, let me get also some of the yellow in here. Let's just try this with a little bit of yellow down. Again, on um, watercolor cardstock. Uh, da, da, da. Here's the orange cream. And again, I'm not I'm not being too precise about going around the the edges perfectly and so on. And then I'm just going to do little hints of some of this lavender. Just for some shading and shadowing on there. Okay, grab my water brush again. And then we can just start blending those colors. Now again, with the embossing powder on here, that's heat set, it is creating a raised edge. So it's kind of holding in any of that watery medium. So I don't have to worry about going over the edge or going in between, like having anything blur or bleed out, which is one reason why I suggest this technique really to a lot of us who maybe, you know, we loved coloring when we were a kid, but haven't done much coloring as an adult or kind of painting in images. It's a really nice way to um, have a little bit of security when you're coloring. Or if you have any issues with your hands, arthritis in your hands, um, carpal tunnel or anything in your wrists where you maybe feel a little bit hesitant about staying in finely detailed lines, this is a great way. Emboss your image first and then you, you have a little bit of security with that. Okay, so feel like I'm on one of those game shows where I'm racing against the clock. <laughs> I guess they're not, they're not going to boot me off, but I do want to be respectful of your time for sure. But I also do want to show you this. Okay, let's add a little bit more of our lavender in there. That there, and then we'll grab some green work in our stem. It's the Lime Aid. This is the grass field. Note to self, if grass, if grass field is available in, in an ink pad color, I must have it. <laughs> it's so pretty. Okay, we'll just put a little bit of that in here. Whew, there we go. Okay, so we've got a bit of our color down on here. And again, you know, you can go back and add some more highlights around here. Take a look. This is the same color combination, but you can see I've got a bit more of the, ooh, that's because I forgot to put in the ruby red. So I've got more ruby red in here. Now these ones I did die cut because there's a coordinating die cut, die set to go with the um, bearded iris. This one does have sentiments, but I still use the sentiment strips on here. 
Again, a little bit of spattering in the background. And then I also did some edging around the outside of that cardstock piece. You can also do this with your um, watercolor brushes. So let me just show you. I'm gonna pick up some of the color on my brush and just kind of run this along the edge so that you can get a watercolored edge on your watercolor cardstock too. Let's see if you can see this up against that. So you can do some edging on there. So, whew, okay, we've got like four minutes to spare. So hopefully this has given you some inspiration on the watercolor, woodless watercolor pencils um, from Altenew, 24 colors. So we've only used just a handful of these. Um, if you've got your watercolor pencils, maybe you haven't gotten them out yet, get them out and let us know what you think because I'm always curious to know what other people are doing with them. So whether you're just using straight black to stamp your images, don't forget, you'll want to be working with your obsidian or permanent ink pad so that since you're working with a watery medium, you can also use your white. Uh, pure white is the one that I use, pure white embossing powder on white watercolor cardstock, or I guess it's kind of like a bone color, and then do some, <laughs> It's like a surprise when it all comes out. And you can also work in your gold embossing. And again, this one, those images are die cut, popped up on some foam tape, and then put down onto a spattery background. So, whew, okay. Again, we've got a couple of um, minutes before we're wrapping up. So if you have not shared yet, please do share while we are live. And you can be in for a possible $15 gift certificate to the Altenew store. Um, I think you could do some, you could find something fun for $15 at the Altenew store. Uh, so again, we are working with, hang on, pop the lid back on the Woodless Watercolor Pencils from Altenew. I've had a whale of a time with these and hopefully um, you've seen how easy they are to use. And then we were also working with the Pretty Pansies set, which I think everybody really liked this. This is a really fun layering set. Um, or of course you can just use the outlines. And then we also used the Build a Flower Bearded Iris. Um, it's got the two irises. One is layerable, the other is the outline, so you can mix and match those. Um, there is a die set that goes along with that as well. Really nice. And just take a look at how beautifully those stamp up. They're really fun. Sentiment Strips 2. This is a stamp set that I use over and over and over again. Um, it's one of my go-tos. And I also promised that I would show and this. We didn't get to this one, but this is one of the pansies that I stamped not onto watercolor cardstock, but onto a smooth white cardstock. So it's it's not, not like a mixed media paper, it's just one stash, like a nice smooth um, white stamping cardstock. And then I used the woodless watercolor pencils on those. Um, and it worked really well. Um, I liked it. I, I think I like the, um, the heft of, or the weight of the watercolor cardstock, and I like the slight texture on it. So kind of depends on um, the look that you're going for and what you happen to have in your stash. If you have watercolor cardstock, try that. Um, if you have something else that is sturdy that you can use a water-based medium with, then grab that and have a go as well. So I think we are just about at time. I want to say a big thank you to everybody for joining today. Hopefully uh, you have had a fun time uh, with us this evening or this afternoon or this morning, depending on where you are. And a big thank you also to Roxanne for keeping us up to date on all of the various products that we were working with. So I do appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I will see you again for another live, gosh, next 
month. I think November 4th is the next one that I'm doing. Um, we also have lots of classes over at Altini. So if you haven't joined us for one of those, do be sure and check those out. We have a lot of fun there as well. Okay, everyone, another great big thank you so much. I have appreciated your time today and had a great time with you. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will catch you again next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.